So, thank you for watching the clips so far and doing what the activities so far. So, as I said in the you know, previous clip, I talked about all the features and why you should learn coding, why you should teach coding in a classroom with your club. Now, the one of the important one was problem solving, but I didn't talk about it. Because it's going to be longer than this. Okay, problem solving in computer, it goes back many years. When uh, first they understand and they use coding, uh, they, they thought about it on computer science only. They didn't think about it on other topics. However, in the 50s, I think, 1950 or in 50s, uh, they started to think about the idea of using this science, using this kind of thinking, in other topics as well. Pepper in let me see, uh, 1996, he started something like constructivism. He said that if you see students are some uh, you know types, one type of student is about those who understand when they make something of their own. For example, in your mathematics, in, in your mathematics uh, classes, you give the students some tools and you ask them to create something, they're going to understand that problem better than others because they are constructivist. Paracis, uh, let's bring this idea to, to mind and say, okay, how we can, you know, broaden this idea into making even ideas. And he started working on this on MIT and his group, they even published a book on it and they started the basics of computational thinking. What you can break the problem into many small problems and try to solve one by one, not a big one. You have to go step by step and like a coder, you have to think like a coder. He started to uh, actually invent a robot and the programming um, environment called Logo. And on that on, on Logo environment, he started to teach children's mathematics. It was a turtle robot that you can uh, you know simply code to the robot like this: go forward, go back. And he asked the students to try to draw a circle, but command the turtle to do it. The students try to think like a coder, okay, the turtle must go one ahead and then go like one left, no, no, that's not going to work, so the turtle must rotate, how, how you know, degrees, they, they didn't know about the degrees, but they started to think like a coder and they understand the problem, and when they finally draw a circle, they had a better perspective, they had a better comprehension of mathematics than others. Years later, in 2006, um, yes, um, Janet, Wing, Janet Wing started this idea that in all the topics in curriculum, we can teach students the problem solving and the way the coders think and see the world. She, she said that we can teach many students, we can, we can teach all we, you have people around you how to do basic things in life, like just packing your things to go to travel. You can, you can actually manage this little problem by computational thinking, like thinking like a coder. Okay. I have to organize the data I have. I have to put them in order. I have to see them as a small problems and put my steps. And I actually build up my steps. Then, step by step, I'm going to reach my goal and solve the huge problem that I saw. Maybe that was difficult. So, after this, many people started to talk about computational thinking, but many said, okay, it's not going to be in curriculum because, you know, ch children cannot understand coding, we have to put it in higher education level. Uh, it was left alone for a while, and now it becomes more trend nowadays, and they are working in it. 
on it and they think it's, it's one of the best uh, methodology to problem solving and when you uh, acquire this skill, computational thinking, you can handle and solve the problems on your own and it's going to help the students on their future life in every aspect of life they can solve all they have it's not about coding it's not about mathematics it's about your life and it's an approach to life so it has some fundamentals it has some uh, you know basics i'm going to talk about it thank you